cytosolic receptors for PAMPs and DAMPs. Three major classes of these cytosolic receptors are not like receptors, rig like receptors, and cytosolic DNA sensors. These cytosolic receptors, similar to the TLRs, are linked to signal transduction pathways that promote inflammation or type I interferon production. Not like receptors, not like receptors, NLRs, are a family of more than 20 different cytosolic proteins, some of which recognize PAMPs and DAMPs and recruit other proteins to form signaling complexes that promote inflammation. This family of proteins is named after NOD, nucleotide oligomerization domain containing protein. Typical NLR proteins contain at least three different domains with distinct structures and functions. These include one underscore a leucine-rich repeat domain that senses the presence of ligand, similar to the leucine-rich repeats of TLRs, two underscore enact, Neuronal apoptosis inhibitory protein NAIP, CYTA, HETE, 3 underscore and TP1, domain, which allows NLRs to bind to one another and form oligomers, 4 underscore and an effector domain, which recruits other proteins to form signaling complexes. There are three NLR subfamilies, the members of which use different effector domains to initiate signaling. The three effector domains are called CARD. Caspus recruitment domain, pyrin domain, and Burr domain. NOD1 and NOD2, members of the CARD domain containing NOD subfamily of NLRs, are expressed in the cytosol of several cell types including mucosal epithelial cells and phagocytes. NOD2 is highly expressed in intestinal panath cells in the intestine, where it stimulates expression of antimicrobial substances called defense and scene response to pathogens. NOD1 recognizes diaminopamelic acid, DAP, derived mainly from gram-negative bacterial peptidoglycan, whereas NOD2 recognizes a distinct molecule called muramildipeptide derived from both gram-negative and gram-positive peptidoglycans. A conformational change occurs that allows the CARD effector domains of the NOD proteins to recruit multiple copies of the kinase RIP2, forming a signaling complex that has been called the NOD synalosome. The RIP2 kinases in these complexes activate NFB, which promotes inflammatory gene expression, similar to TLRs that signal through MYD88, discussed earlier. Both NOD1 and NOD2 appear to be important in innate immune responses to bacterial pathogens in the gastrointestinal tract, such as Helicobacter pylori and Listeria monocytogens. There is great interest in the finding that certain NOD2 gene polymorphisms increase the risk for an inflammatory disease of the bowel called Crohn's disease. Also, gain-of-function mutations of NOD2 that cause increased NOD signaling lead to a systemic inflammatory disease called Bilas syndrome. The NLRP subfamily of NOD-like receptors respond to cytosolic PAMPs and DAMPs by forming signaling complexes called inflammasomes, which generate active forms of the inflammatory cytokines IL-1 and IL-18. There are 14 NLRPs, NLR family, pyrin domain containing proteins, most of which share a pyrin effector domain, named after the Greek root pyro, meaning heat, because it was first identified in a mutated gene that is associated with an inherited febrile illness. Inflammasomes containing three of these NLRPs ipaf nlrc 4 NLRP3, also called cryopyrin, and NLRP1 have been well studied. When these NLRPs are activated by the presence of microbial products or changes in the amount of endogenous molecules or ions in the cytosol, they bind other proteins through homotypic interactions between shared structural domains, thereby forming the inflammasome complex. For example, after binding of a ligand, Multiple identical NLRP3 proteins interact to form an oligomer, and each NLRP3 protein in the oligomer binds an adapter protein called ASC. The adapters then bind an inactive precursor form of the enzyme Caspas-1 through interactions of Caspas recruitment domains on both proteins. CASPases are proteases with cysteine residues in their active site that cleave substrate proteins at aspartate residues. Caspas-1 becomes active only after recruitment to the inflammasome complex. Although several other CASPases participate in a form of cell death called apoptosis, see Chapter 15, 
function of Caspis 1 is to cleave the inactive cytoplasmic precursor forms of two homologous cytokines called IL-1 and IL-18. The inflammasome. The activation of the NLRP3 inflammasome, which processes pro-IL-1 to active IL-1, is shown. Inflammasomes with other NLRP proteins function in a similar way. Various PAMPs or DAMPs induce pro-IL-1 expression through pattern recognition receptor signaling. NLRP inflammasome responses are induced by a wide variety of cytoplasmic stimuli that are often associated with infections and cell stress, including microbial products, environmentally or endogenously derived crystals, and reduction in cytosolic potassium ion K+, concentrations. Microbial products that activate NLRP inflammasomes include, 1. Bacterial molecules, such as flagellin, muramildipeptide, LPS, and pore-forming toxins, as well as bacterial and viral RNA. 2. Crystalline substances are also potent activators of inflammasomes, and these crystals can be derived from the environment, such as asbestos and silica, or they can be endogenously derived such as monosodium urate, calcium pyrophosphate dehydrate, and cholesterol. 3. Extracellular ATP, perhaps released from dead cells and transported into the cytoplasm of the responding cell. 4. Generation of reactive oxygen species, which are toxic free radicals of oxygen that are often produced during cell injury. Inflammasome activation of caspis 1 may also cause a form of programmed cell death called pyrotosis, characterized by swelling of cells, loss of plasma membrane integrity, and release of inflammatory mediators. Pyrotosis results in the death of certain microbes that gain access to the cytosol and enhances the release of inflammasome-generated IL-1, which lacks a hydrophobic leader sequence that is required for conventional secretion of proteins from cells. In addition to caspis-1-dependent pyrotosis, a caspis 1 1 dependent pathway of pyroptosis is required for protection against certain bacteria that readily gain access to the cytosol of host cells, but the innate stimuli that activate this pathway are not yet known. Gout is a painful inflammatory condition of the joints that has long been known to be caused by deposition of monosodium urate crystals in joints. Based on the understanding that urate crystals activate the inflammasome, IL-1 antagonists have been used to effectively treat cases of severe gout that are resistant to conventional anti-inflammatory drugs. Similarly, pseudogout is caused by deposition of calcium pyrophosphate crystals and inflammasome activation. Occupational inhalation of silica and asbestos can cause chronic inflammatory and fibrotic disease of the lung, and there is also interest in the potential of blocking the inflammasome or IL-1 to treat these diseases. Dysregulated activation of the inflammasome due to autosomal gain of function mutations in one or another of its component proteins leads to inappropriately triggered and excess IL-1 production. The result is recurrent attacks of fever and localized inflammation, most commonly in joints and intestines. These disorders are called cryopyrin-associated periodic syndromes, CAPS, and are a subset of a larger group of periodic fever syndromes with similar symptoms caused by excessive production of or responses to inflammatory cytokines. These disorders are also called auto-inflammatory syndromes, because they are characterized by spontaneous inflammation without an overt inciting trigger. Such diseases are distinct from autoimmune disorders, which are disorders of adaptive immunity caused by antibodies and slash or T cells reactive with self-antigens. Patients with CAPS can be successfully treated with IL-1 antagonists. A great deal of interest in the inflammasome has recently been generated by findings that it may be activated by excessive amounts of endogenous substances deposited in tissues. These substances include cholesterol crystals in atherosclerosis, free fatty acids and lipids in obesity-associated metabolic syndrome, and amyloid in Alzheimer's disease. In all these situations, Activation of the inflammasome leads to production of IL-1 and inflammation, which may contribute to the pathogenesis of the diseases. Such findings have spurred clinical trials to alleviate some of these diseases, atherosclerotic heart disease, and obesity-associated type 2 diabetes, with IL-1 antagonists.